Hello, everybody. This is Menopause Taylor bringing you the state of menopause in the world today. And I am sort of that goofy menopause lady. I give you all sorts of information about menopause. And <laughs> last week, I started what I call the WHAM series. WHAM, W-H-A-M. That stands for What Happens at Menopause. And today, we're going to discuss what shrinks at menopause. You see, I think that grouping various occurrences at menopause helps you to see common themes. And it helps you make sense of what's going on with your body and in your life. So for purposes of our discussion today, I'm going to separate what shrinks at menopause into what shrinks on your body and what shrinks in terms of your quality of life. For your body, we'll address all the following. Your joint mobility, your bladder, your vagina, your bones, your brain, and your ovaries. <laughs> and for your quality of life, we will address your hours of sleep, your memory, your tolerance, your interest in making others happy, your sex drive, your friendships, and your ability to get a job. Now, I will bet that as I list those things, you are already connecting the dots. <laughs> You're already realizing that there's a theme of shrinkage at menopause. So let's go through them one by one and I'll explain what's happening. We'll start with your joint mobility. Now this is all about range of motion. Remember when you were young and you could twist, bend, skip, and contort your body without even thinking about it? And now at menopause you feel stiff? I mean, getting up off the floor is a big deal. Have you ever noticed how elderly people rearrange things so that everything is within reach? I mean, they situate their stuff so that they don't have to reach too high or bend too low. Everything they need to get to is between the level of their eyes and their waist. Why? Well, because that's because their joints aren't very mobile. I talked to you about your joints drying up in the last podcast, and your joint mobility shrinks for the very same reason. The estrogen that used to lubricate them so that they moved easily is gone. At menopause, it's important to keep moving your joints, but gentle movement without impact is what you need. So Pilates, yoga, and stretching become more important than ever. The next thing that we'll talk about is your bladder. Before menopause, you can hold a lot of urine in your bladder for a long time. It's like your bladder is bigger. But at menopause, your bladder capacity shrinks. You just can't hold your urine anymore. You have to know where the ladies' room is because when you have to go, it's urgent. Many women have actual incontinence. Now, that's when you leak. And there are two different types of incontinence. One is called stress incontinence. That's when you leak when you put your bladder under stress. And the stress for your bladder can be laughing, coughing, lifting, or exercise. The other is urge incontinence. Now that's when your bladder just contracts on its own regardless of what you're doing and it doesn't require any stress at all. You can leak just a dribble or you can leak huge gushes of urine. And I'll be teaching you a lot more about the details of all of these things much later, but the thing to recognize now is that the overall effect is one of your bladder shrinking. Next is your vagina. Boy, does it shrink. Most women have the symptom of vaginal dryness at the time of menopause. Well, guess what's really going on? Your vagina is quite literally shrinking. That's why intercourse becomes painful for so many women. And if you don't do something to prevent vaginal shrinkage, it can get so small that intercourse is absolutely impossible. I have seen vaginas that were smaller than my little pinky finger. 
So this is one of the reasons that there are so many vaginal estrogen products out there that are specifically and only for your vaginal symptoms of menopause. And they have nothing to do with any other symptom or any other purpose. This is such an easy thing to prevent. You just have to know that this is what's going on and this is what's happening to your vagina if you don't prevent it. Unfortunately, most women don't get the necessary education to avoid this outcome of vaginal shrinkage. In the last podcast, I explained that three things happen to your vagina at menopause, all because of estrogen loss. The wall of your vagina gets thin, the wrinkles disappear, and the lubrication dries up. The overall result of those three things is severe shrinkage of your vagina. Next is your bones. Now, I'm calling it shrinkage because the quantity of your bone dwindles at menopause. Another name for it is osteoporosis. And if you look at osteoporosis, it just is a matter of the holes in the bone becoming bigger. You know how women shrink in height as they age? Well, it's because they really are shrinking. Their bones are shrinking. And since your skeleton is what determines your height, your height decreases. This is not just about appearance though. If you lose bone, you put yourself at risk for fracture of your hip, spine, and wrist. And all of this is directly due to estrogen loss. In the first five years without estrogen, you lose 2% of your bone per year. And after that, you lose 1% per year for the rest of your life. This is why compensating for estrogen loss is so, so, so important. Sustaining a fracture can make you incapacitated for the rest of your life. What about your brain? Now, I've taught you about this before. Your brain goes from being large to small. Now, the thing to understand is that your brain literally shrinks. That's what Alzheimer's disease is, brain shrinkage. And this is another direct consequence of estrogen loss. And compensating for estrogen loss is not easy without estrogen. You have to do really hard things that adults typically refrain from doing, like going back to school, learning to play an instrument from scratch, and learning a new language. You see, adults don't like to do stuff like that, but that's the stuff that prevents brain shrinkage. It's not easy stuff, it's hard stuff. Okay, so far we've talked about things that are more problematic when they shrink, right? But there are two anatomical structures that are problematic if they don't shrink, shrink your ovaries. I say two anatomical structures because you have two ovaries. At postmenopause, your ovaries are supposed to shrink. They are supposed to go, they are supposed to go from being big and plump to tiny, tiny little dried up things that are about the size of raisins. And the reason they shrink is because they go out of business. They no longer produce eggs or estrogen. So if they don't shrink, something's wrong with them and they usually need to come out. It is never, ever, ever okay to have an enlarged ovary once you become postmenopausal. It is never okay to wait and watch it and see what happens. Never. Okay, now we're going to discuss the quality of life issues that shrink at menopause. You know, a lot of what happens at menopause is really about your quality of life. There's such a tendency to focus just on the symptoms or just on the diseases, but there are so many social factors that have a huge effect on your quality of life. So I'm going to include those in this theme of what shrinks at menopause. The most obvious thing that shrinks at menopause is the number of hours of sleep you get. Insomnia is one of the most problematic symptoms of menopause. Inability to sleep is directly related to lo the loss of all the sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and 
testosterone. Have you ever noticed that puberty and pregnancy are associated with tons of sleep? Well, with both puberty and pregnancy, you have an increase in those sex hormones. But when you lose your sex hormones at menopause, you can't sleep. So sleep and hormones are connected. When your hormones increase, sleep comes easily. When they decrease, sleep is hard to come by. And what happens when you don't get enough sleep? Your memory is worthless. So memory is another thing that shrinks at menopause. Most women describe their brains as being foggy and their memory is fleeting. I mean, they'll be thinking of something one minute and they can't remember what they were thinking about the very next minute. And then to go with all this sleeplessness and inability to remember anything, your tolerance shrinks. You used to be able to tolerate things that were a nuisance. Now you blow up at the slightest little things. You're just so touchy. Everyone walks on eggshells around you because they never know when you'll blow. And along with your shrinking tolerance, you have a shrinking interest in making others happy. You used to jump through hoops to please the ones you love. I mean, you just loved it when they were happy but you really just don't give a hoot anymore. You decide that you're gonna do what you wanna do and they can all just go jump in a lake. Now, this particular sentiment is due to loss of the hormone oxytocin. Oxytocin is the hormone of love. It's the hormone that induces you to make sure everybody gets along. It makes you the glue in the family. You can think of it as the hippie, peace, love, and happiness hormone. But at menopause, it disappears too. And when that happens, you stop caring about making everybody happy. And that brings us to your sex drive. Now, your sex drive is determined primarily by testosterone. And testosterone drops after you have been postmenopausal for about two years. So the shrinking of your sex drive may be completely separate and distinct from the shrinkage of your vagina. You may have one without the other, or they may occur at different times. But that shrinkage in your sex drive is also due to a loss of oxytocin. If sex was something you did mostly to please your partner, you're likely to lose interest when you lose your oxytocin. If you want to boost your sex drive, testosterone replacement will do the trick. But I've heard many a woman say, I don't care if I ever have sex again. So it's not only about oxytocin or just testosterone. It can be kind of a combination of things. Now, in addition, to this disinterest in your partnership. You may also notice shrinkage of your friendships. This is due to declining oxytocin too. At the age of menopause, women just narrow their circle of friends. They realize that they're fed up with certain people and they just dump them. They stop caring if everybody else likes them and they stop pretending to like everyone else. I guess you could say that they're old enough to realize that life is sort of like an elevator. <laughs> you have to let some people off as you go up. <laughs> so you decide who your real friends are and you narrow your circle of friends. And it's very common and very, very normal. I've had lots of women write comments about this. They actually, they actually wonder what's wrong with them when they fairly suddenly just don't care as much about their social lives.